Sometimes when you're developing an application, you need to use code from another library. Right here in this Java application built with Gradle, I'd like to use the string utils class to process the input by switching it to uppercase. But when I run the application right now, I get a runtime exception saying string utils can't be found. Stick around to learn the best way to add a dependency to a Gradle project, how to configure where Gradle pulls dependencies from, and what Gradle does to make the dependency available to your application code. In my example, I've got an error, but I know that string utils exists within the Apache Commons Lang3 library because I've used it before. In fact, I can even see details of the library at mvmrepository.com, which is the website that shows the contents of the Maven central repository. Maven is a format for storing dependencies. If we look in the linked pom.xml descriptor file, we can see the dependency has a group, artifact ID, and version. These three data points are called the dependency's coordinates, like a location on a map. These coordinates are all Gradle needs to find a dependency within a specified repository. Note that I said within a specified repository though. It's up to us to configure that. Let's go to the Gradle build script. I'm using the Kotlin build.gradle.kts here, but I'll show you the Groovy equivalent as we go. We specify the repositories for Gradle to search in like this. In our case, we want Gradle to look in Maven Central, so we call the corresponding method. Depending on your use case though, you might need to use the Google Maven repository, Maven Local, your own custom Maven repository, perhaps hosted by your company, or even a file location. Now that Gradle knows which repository to look in, let's tell it what to look for. We do that within the dependencies section of the build script. Specify the coordinates, or in other words, the group, artifact ID, and version, with a string using a colon separator. By the way, in Gradle, the artifact ID is called the name. You might be wondering what the word implementation here means. That's known as a dependency configuration. You can think of it as a bucket into which dependencies are thrown. Yes. There are different buckets that get used in different ways, but the implementation bucket, or dependency configuration, is super helpful in Java projects because its dependencies get added to the compile and runtime class paths. Anyway, more on this shortly, but in many cases, implementation is what you should use for dependencies you want to access from your application's code. With the dependency defined like this, my IDE IntelliJ IDEA still doesn't know about it. To fix that, I can hit the Load Gradle Changes button or use the keyboard shortcut. Now when I look at my code, the errors are gone since string utils within Commons Lang3 is now available. Let's try running the application again from the command line and this time we get the expected output in uppercase. Ok, cool. But what's actually happening here? Well, as I mentioned before, implementation dependencies end up on the compile and runtime class paths. We can actually see what's on these class paths by running the dependencies task. It shows that indeed our compile and runtime class paths now contain Commons Lang3. That means Gradle is able to compile and run our code correctly. Nice. But there are three more things you'll find super helpful to know when working with Gradle dependencies. First, there are actually two ways to define the dependency coordinates. What you saw here is the string notation, which is just the group name and version separated by a colon. You might also see the map notation, where each data point has its own key, making the declaration more explicit. Use whichever notation you prefer, but apply it consistently within a project. Second, you might come across other dependency configurations like compile only and runtime only. Use compile only when you want the dependency to appear only on the compile class path, like when you're using an annotation processor such as Lombok. And yes, you probably guessed it, use runtime only when you want the dependency to appear only on the runtime class path. For example, a particular database implementation library like PostgreSQL. The third tip is for any IntelliJ IDEA users. When you're within the dependencies section of the build script, press Alt Insert in Windows 
or Command N on Mac, then select Add Package. You can then easily search for and add any dependency or without leaving the IDE. So in summary, just remember to declare your dependency in the build script using the correct group, name and version against the relevant dependency configuration, which is likely implementation. Oh, and don't forget to add the required repositories. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about building Java applications with Gradle, why not check out my free introductory course, Get Going with Gradle. That's it for adding dependencies in Gradle. This is Tom, signing off.